G'day everyone, this is Some Sub's YouTube channel and I'm Lucas, your Aussie instructor for surviving in the digital jungle. In previous videos, the suave Bradley made about digital fingerprints and information bubbles, he mentioned that many services use geolocation data. But what if you want to hide this information about your address? Well, today we will compare four of the most popular methods to do so and tell you why none of them guarantee anonymity. Let's start with the most common way people ensure anonymity, private browsing, AKA incognito. According to statistics, 46% of Americans use it. This mode first appeared on Safari in 2005 and a couple years later, other browsers caught on. Today, more than 40% of network users use this mode for embarrassing searches. Admit it, you've also pressed Command Shift N or Control Shift N more than once. But for what? to prevent the use of tracking mechanisms for search engines and advertising networks, to hide a particular query from the search history, to preserve anonymity, hide your IP address and geolocation data. I have some bad news for you. It's not by chance that I call this level zero. Incognito mode doesn't really give you any anonymity at all. Your computer and software still have features that allow search engines, social networks and advertising networks to uniquely identify you in private browsing modes. Of course, Google pretends that it doesn't recognize you, but in fact, this isn't the case. Therefore, for example, professional SEO specialists have long abandoned checking search results in this mode and use much more advanced tools instead. Private browsing is not able to change your IP address, despite what your auntie says. Therefore, the company that provides you with access to the network sees which sites you are accessing, and those in turn can determine your location. Therefore, it's a very bad idea to go to porn sites from an office computer by opening the incognito tab. They'll see your real IP address and unfortunately for everyone involved, the sites you visited. Are you surprised? 76% of Americans who took part in the survey couldn't even correctly talk about the advantages of private browsing. Private browsing only covers your tracks on your device. The browser won't save your search queries, the results of filling out forms, or the history of websites visited. This mode is suitable for searching for gifts for your family members or for during presentations, but no more than that. Therefore, we need to go a little bit deeper. Right away, follow me. Proxy server technology is really the simplest way of increasing your anonymity on the web. Imagine that you want to pass an anonymous note to your friend. Of course, to pass it to them with your own hands is a bad option. Your friend is unlikely to believe that the author of the message is not you, especially if you're the one giving it to them. Therefore, you can ask another person to pass your note on for you. Proxy servers work the same way. If you specify the address of such a server in the network connection settings, then all information between you and other sites will go via the proxy. The server will play the role of the intermediary that passes on your notes and you have to entrust the secrets in your note to this intermediary. You could ask them not to tell the recipient who sent the email. If the intermediary agrees with this, it's not going to reveal your identity, or in the case of a proxy, your IP address. Such servers are referred to as anonymous. But if the recipient wants to find out who the sender was and goes to the police, the intermediary can give out who the real sender was. Some proxies don't even hide the identity of the sender, and these are referred to as transparent. They can speed up your experience on popular websites, but they can be a bad choice if you want to use them for the sake of anonymity. Therefore, always test the proxy. The easiest way to do this is simply to go to what is my IP address website and check if it can find you. In addition, and in most cases, the proxy has access to the content of the messages, as if you were transmitting a note without the envelope. Therefore, the intermediary can read the contents, it's not like they're going to be interested in it, but there is such a possibility. Why do we so often use the services which have such unreliable intermediaries? First of all, it's simple. To use the proxy server, you don't even need to install additional software. It's easy enough to just specify the address in your browser settings, open up a new window, and off you go. Secondly, proxies are widely available. You can easily find a lot of free proxy servers on the web, and commercial ones are quite inexpensive you will be able to choose a server with your desired IP address, and in a matter of moments, you'll be virtually transported off to Singapore or South Korea. With this, you could significantly complicate the life of an investigator 
if you use a chain of several anonymous proxy servers. Imagine that from England, you first connect to a server in India, which transmits your request across to Indonesia, and from there, the message goes on to America. To track your actions, you would have to contact all of the intermediaries, and this is a long and difficult process. Proxy servers are used not only by ill-natured intruders, however. With their help, you can overcome some local restrictions. For example, if you want to watch Rick and Morty, season five on Netflix, you could place your location where it's already available to watch. In England, however, well, we're gonna to have to wait for another six months. Some users try to substitute IP addresses to get more favorable prices for flights and hotels. By the way, if you are interested in testing this method, let us know in the comments below. We're thinking about maybe doing an experiment. VPN is the abbreviation of a virtual private network. But what does that mean? Imagine, for example, you work for a large airline whose branches are scattered all over the world. Of course, you need to provide shared access to the ticket booking system, corporate email, internal resources, and messengers. This could all be done via public internet, but it's much more convenient to gather all of these users into one network as if they were all in the same building. Such virtual networks are VPNs. The principal operation of a VPN is similar to a proxy. All the information exchanged with sites on the internet go via an intermediary server, but this time the traffic is securely encrypted. This is the responsibility of the program that you need to additionally install on your computer. Now, if we expand on our little note metaphor, the intermediary this time will not be able to read the contents of your notes. The only problem is they still know that you sent messages to specific addresses. And in the case where the police are on your trail, they'll willingly share this information with law enforcement. In the video we posted about famous hackers and their downfalls, Bradley talked about the LOLSEC computer hacking group. One of its members got caught on the basis of sloppy VPN usage. Cody Recursion Kritzinger used a VPN service with the charismatic handle, hide my ass, to hack Sony Entertainment servers. When the FBI were hot on his tail, Cody destroyed his hard drive, but even this didn't save him. The evidence remained on the logs of the VPN provider. By comparing the request from Cody's computer to Sony's servers and comparing them with the time of the attack, the investigators received the necessary evidence. Without the hide my ass log, it would have been near impossible to prove Kritzinger's guilt. Only active cooperation with the investigation saved Cody from a 15-year sentence. However, if you're not aiming to attack a mega corporation, VPN servers will help to ensure a high level of network security. In addition to reliable traffic encryption, such VPN networks protect against several types of attacks. For example, some sorts of phishing attacks. VPNs are also useful if you often have to visit countries where states restrict access to certain resources. China or the Middle East come to mind. In addition, you can build a chain of several VPNs, and this will significantly increase your network security. One of the main disadvantages, however, of VPNs is their cost. Subscribing to a proven and reliable service is much more expensive than using a proxy. In one of our previous videos, we mentioned that you can get a hold of free VPNs, which will provide you many of the benefits of paid ones. However, if you have the choice and the wallet, I'd advise against using free VPNs. These services often leak the data of their users to information brokers and intruders. For example, the provider Hola used computers of its free users to organize botnets. VPN technology was not created to ensure anonymity. This is just one of the effects of its applications. Because of this, I'm now going to talk about a solution that puts browsing privacy at the forefront of their endeavors. Let's go to level three. The Tor is not the name of a well-renowned Norse god, but rather the abbreviation of the onion router. It's a strange name, but it does join a long list of food euphemisms used in tech. The name refers to the main principle of the network, multi-layer encryption. In the wise words of Shrek, onions have layers. And only by peeling them off one at a time can you get to the truth. Similarly, Tor networks, the information is packaged and protected by several layers of encryption. Why is this necessary? Well, look at this. All computers that are part of the Tor network are divided into three types, entry node or guard node, middleman or non-exit node, and the exit node. Our request enters the network through several guard nodes. Then it passes on through to the middleman, 
and then finally to the exit node. In fact, it resembles a chain of three proxy servers. The main difference is that the source data is encrypted three times separately for each of the network nodes. When a message arrives at the guard node, the program decrypts the first layer of protection and transmits it onto the middleman. The middleman node removes the second layer of protection and transmits it then onto the exit. The exit node finally decrypts the data and sends it to the internet. It really looks like how we peel onions. What does such multi-level encryption give? Well, two nodes out of three don't even know what's in the transmitted message. And the one that does know this information doesn't have the details of who sent it. This middleman knows which nodes at the input were connected, but it doesn't store this information. As a result, a really, really high level of anonymity is achieved. The main disadvantage of this system, however, are the low speeds and incompatibility with several popular protocols. Therefore, it is not absolutely impossible to watch a video via Tor or download a torrent, but it can be extremely difficult. On the other hand, Tor is the most secure platform for the actions of human rights defenders, independent journalists, and dissidents prosecuted by the authority. It was thanks to this system that Edward Snowden was able to transmit detailed materials about how the NSA spies on the American citizens to journalists at places like The Guardian and The Washington Post. This is a little ironic, considering that the basis of Tor was developed by the Naval Research Laboratory, which was by the order of the United States government. How reliable is Tor? It definitely protects you until the experts of special services are seriously interested in you. Their job is to track the organizers of drug trafficking, producers of illegal pornography, human traffickers, etc. Sophisticated and sometimes bordering on genius methods are used in the fight against these serious criminals. For example, de-anonymization using sound beacons. Imagine that you're completely anonymous. You're using a properly configured tour, a browser that doesn't leave any digital fingerprints, and a communication line protected from interception. Everything is great and fine until the moment you get to the trap site. This site will not try to track your position, ask you to enter any data, or get information from your browser. It will just make a sound. You might not even hear it, but it will still be detected by the microphone on your mobile phone. The application installed on your smartphone will record the sound and send the information about your current position to a special server. Everything is extremely simple. Even if one of your devices is absolutely protected, there's always a high risk that other devices are more vulnerable. And this type of attack, by the way, is called a CSS device tracking. However, such tricks are used individually to search for particularly dangerous criminals. You're much more likely to face another danger. And this is called the vulnerability problem of the exit node. If your computer plays this role, you will have to answer for all of the illegal activities that are performed through it and it will be extremely difficult to prove to the FBI that it was not you who tried to hack the Pentagon. Therefore, if you still decide that you want to become a colleague of Jason Bourne, don't forget to visit the Tor's client settings and enable a ban on the use of exit node. Well, as you can see, absolute security can only be achieved in one way never turn on your computer. The degree of your anonymity depends not only on your actions, but also the qualification of the guys looking for you. Try to be reasonable and assess the consequences of your actions. If you're trying to buy a gift online for someone in your family, it's probably enough to just switch over to the incognito mode. Of course, over time, you will be tormented by product advertising, but these queries will not be visible in your search history. If you're gonna complain about your boss online, don't be too lazy and make sure to use a proxy or VPN. And of course, don't use an office computer when you're posting. With a VPN, you'll be safe airing all your dirty laundry in public. Now, if you are collecting information about the most profitable options for, say, wholesale purchases abroad or collecting data about their manufacturers, use a regional VPN. Often the prices for the locals is gonna differ from the prices available abroad. Finally, if you are planning to take down the US government, or start your own global drug empire, well, just give up. No encryption system, no anonymization technology is gonna protect you from special service agents. Therefore, don't incriminate yourself. Do something more legitimate, like trading in meme stocks. My main advice, however, is to stay subscribed and up to date with SumSub. My name's Lucas, giving you the information to survive among the predators in the digital jungle. <laughs>